good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Unlock Show. I'm your host, Tracy Wilson, and today I have got a super special guest with me who's going to share how you can really live a life that is enlivened. And I absolutely love what Marianne Sinclair is all about because her message is like smack bang in alignment with exactly what I talk about. So she calls it living an enlivened, an enlivened life. I call it living an unlocked life. So, you know, we are both absolutely on the same page with our philosophies and what it is that we, you know, what we do and what we, I'm going to say, what we preach about. So today I wanted to talk with her. I actually asked her if we could talk about this from a very universal perspective. So how you really live that, you know, what are the keys to living a life that is uh, enlivened, that where you feel alive, where you feel like you've got um, energy, that you're actually living on purpose and you're, you know, you're doing everything that kind of, that lights you up, that enlivens you, enlivens you from the inside. Marianne is amazing. She is the founder of the Me First movement. So I'm going to pop that up on the screen. So if right now, guys, I want you to hashtag Me First. So let's grab this up and pop that on the screen. So here it is. I want you to hashtag Me First movement. Make sure that you do that because she is the queen of the Me First movement. She also amplifies working really closely with women now in the process of reclaiming their sovereignty in all capacities. But like I said, today's show is not just focused on women. Yeah. This is a show for men and women. So we're talking about in the capacity of sexually, emotionally, financially, creatively, and relationship uh, wise. She's internationally acclaimed. She's an expert in leading women to, into sovereignty through their bodies so that they can fully live a life that is unlocked and enlivened so that they can actually have it all. So welcome to the show, Marianne. So wonderful to have you here. Oh, it's great. From way over on the other side of the world, we both are, aren't we? Me in Florida and you over uh, in Australia. It's just, or New Zealand or Australia? I apologize. Well, Australia now, but yes, That's you are right. spot on because I was originally from New Zealand. So terrific. It is so wonderful to be here. And, you know, as you read my bio, I was like going, yes, I am. It's me first, everybody. We all need to make ourselves a priority. It is not just women. It is a universal from, you know, not just genders, but um, it, it's everybody. We all need to make ourselves a priority to come alive and live a more fulfilled and fulfilling life. What I, what I really love about this, Marianne, is because if I think back and, and given you, you mentioned the fact that I grew up in New Zealand. Now, growing up in New Zealand is really that our culture is very like humble. You, you don't, the, the, the culture that we had was um, you're not somebody who really does think about yourself. And if you do think about yourself and you put yourself first, I'm going to call it out and I'm going to say that what people would label you as being, you know, selfish. So I want to cover that off and kind of get us, uh, uh, um, get our heads around this kind of label of, well, if you put yourself first, then therefore you are selfish. The second part of kind of my upbringing, and I don't know if a lot of other people can kind of resonate with this, is that you were, um, you were, you were to be humble. You were to not really talk about yourself in a way that was um, putting yourself out there or, or quote unquote, bragging about yourself. So let's talk about this whole um, concept of, you know, putting yourself, putting yourself first. And what does that actually mean? And why is that so, so freaking important? Well, that's it. I can like move forward and really get dig in because I went through a period where I wasn't people. Well, I lived as a people pleaser and as you know, really putting everybody else before myself. And what happened in that process is I didn't have boundaries. I didn't have ways to really nourish myself. I was trying to nourish myself by what I was doing for everybody else. And so it wasn't until I came to the point where I allowed myself what made me happy. I, I not allowed myself, but I began to refocus. What was it that really truly made me happy? 
and what made me begin to come alive. So when you come from an external focus versus an internal focus, you begin to do everything for everybody else. And you begin to make your, your accolades more of what drives you versus what does it make you feel yummy, good, alive. And the more you've put that focus on that, the more you can have more energy to give to others. So you brought up something really good that I want to touch on. And that is the selfish versus really self-focused. And we all, many of us were taught, you know, not to brag, not to um, turn the attention on ourselves. We were supposed to give and you shall receive. And although I like giving, um, I don't want my receiving to be because of my giving. I want it to be because I truly am in alignment with what my soul is wanting me to do. And that's what brings me alive. Not, um, you know, from the standpoint of I'm going to give and everybody's going to be happy with me and they're going to feel good because I'm trying to take care of everybody. I'm trying to carry everything and everybody on my shoulders. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, I get so tired and so worn out by doing it that way. So now it's the shift. It is the shift from selfish to self-centered and not in an egotistical way, but as in a way that really feeds and nourishes our souls. What's interesting about that, because what the question I've got is there's going to be a lot of people that are watching and that they would have been brought up this way. I don't think, you know, my upbringing was a lot different to other people's in that sense. And you've just reiterated that, that we get told, you know, um, you don't want to put yourself first because that's selfish. Um, you And I, I can recall hearing that a lot as a child, right? So as you grow up and you, you, you become a mother, um, you become a father, you tend to be somebody whom is that the caregiver, the person that's trying to take care of everybody else when was that so there was a moment in time obviously where you thought hang on a minute I'm I'm this is not right this is not feeling the way that it should even though I thoroughly enjoy being a giver I thoroughly enjoy you know pleasing everybody else but somewhere externally you were getting that recognition but internally it was like there's still this level of emptiness or something not quite right inside can you share what do you remember the moment that that kind oh, yeah. of happened like when that shift started to take place because I want you to share that because I think there's going to be a whole lot of other men and women who are out there thinking, you know, I'm the I'm the bread, I'm the man, I'm supposed to be, supposed to be the breadwinner, I'm supposed to be strong, I'm supposed to be doing all these things and looking after my family, yet somewhere deep inside, I'm not feeling fulfilled. So tell us about yes. when that happened for you. I, in the US, we have something that's called hospice. And it is when a person is being taken care of right on the last stages before their death. Mm -hmm. And I have a 23 year old at that time who was chronically ill. And she was at the point where her body was not doing good. And I was at the point where I was burnt out beyond burnt out. If you see pictures back then compared to now, there was this point where I'm there, she's dying. I'm at the point where if I don't shift the focus and take care of myself, there was a pivotal like moment where I knew that I had to leave her there and I had to go take care of myself or we both were going to die. And that's really a, I don't encourage anybody to get to the bottom of the barrel where I did. Because you can make it right now. There's mindset that goes into play. There's looking at some shadow work. Because for me, there were some unconscious things running in the background where I was, you know, those things that you talked about, those myths and those beliefs that we took on as children. 
I had some of those running in the background that really had me staying in that cycle of giving and, and thinking that I had to do these things as a mom. I had to take care of my family, take care of my business, do all the things, but I wasn't taking care of me. And I wasn't putting me first and there was no self-love. There was only this, it was really a martyrdom and it was really not pretty. And, you know, I would want to find other people who were in misery at that point, you know, misery loves company. And, you know, I can just remember that I'd be like, you know, well, don't you see how miserable I am? I just want out of this misery, but I don't know how. And that's where, you know, there's a, a pivotal and moment where I got help. I reached out to coaches. I reached out to others to begin to walk my way back out of, you know, that bottom of the barrel and burnout. You know, there's, there's something, I mean, that's obviously, you know, that feeling of responsibility and obligation and, you know, all those things that we sort of take on and I should be doing this because yeah. my role as um, as the mom and the person that's supposed to, you know, this persona that I've created to keep everything together, I must, I must uphold that. And I think that um, point where you're talking about, you know, martyrdom over, um, uh, that, that that fine line between being like that real martyr and I can handle all this and I've got it all together, but yet on the inside, you know, things are, are starting to crumble. When when, when you realise that that were the case and you mentioned that you sort of went, okay, I've got to do something about this. I have to turn the tide on this and start focusing on me, focusing inward. And then talk us through like, what did you do to get some help? What, what did you do to help pave your way out of that, that misery? The first thing I did was I was listening to my stories and I had collapsed everything into a we. And although we're told, you know, to not be me focused, but be we focused and to be unified, there is a, there's not, um, it, it's not good because we, I used to say, I would collapse my stories along with my daughter. I would collapse our stories into being, um, we are going to the doctor. We are in hospice. We are um, the family unit. And there was a point where I had to separate my child's experience versus my experience. And it's so often we, you know, become one with our children when they're in the womb and when, when men, you know, hold this baby for the first time and then we begin to have a we, um, it's imperative to separate that. It's imperative to begin to come back to your own sovereignty, your own identity, your own, and then you can have as your leadership in that, as your own leadership in your own beingness starts to evolve and your emotions start to evolve. And then you can bring it back to a unified we, but still everybody has their own experiences. We don't have to take on everybody. So I began by um, hiring a coach I began by doing mindset work, shadow work. I began to really come into my body. And I talk a lot about embodiment because it's the fastest way. So the work I do now is really getting a person back in tune to their body, not spiraling up in their thoughts. I can get them out of that hell that they're in, in a matter of seconds by really bringing them back into the body and the breath. So breath work, embodiment work, feelings, sensations, and then looking at the mindset and the, um, the shadow work. And this is this work that you you're talking about is something that no matter what situation you're in, that you can use this to get back to, you know, let's call it center, get back into yourself, 
uh, really, and that might sound a little bit woo-woo, get back into yourself, but, you know, getting, coming back to like the true, who who am I and what am I about and what is it that I actually want to do with my life uh, as opposed to that kind of universal we. And it's interesting when you talk about that, like I'm I'm thinking about, yeah, man, I've done that. And, and it's often because, and I can think about an instance where that actually um, had me come undone, right? So when um, I, I was very successful in my, in my previous career and I had been nominated for this award and I went and my thoughts were that I was going to talk about the, the universal we, about my team and exactly what you were talking about, collapsing that together. So that was like, because mm -hmm. that, that's what a strong leader and that's what, you know, I'm supposed to do. It's not all about me because that was what I was taught. And in fact, that lost me. Um, it lost me that title because the the uh, judges of that said, "Do you know what? You spoke a lot about what your team did, and not and not about what you did." So we couldn't differentiate between what was it that you actually had a part to play in that, as opposed to what the rest of your team did. So it's really interesting how um, how this this philosophy that you talk about can actually be can be so detrimental to us when we actually think that we're doing the right thing and we're we're being very um you know all encompassing and, and family oriented yes because you're not stepping into your leadership you're really what you described over there was you know you you really um devalued yourself yeah. And you devalued what you were bringing to the table. And there's a difference of boasting and there's a difference of coming from ego versus really, really talking about your accolades and what you did and the job that you we do. I find that, you know, it's so often we, we want to sit back and we want to, you know, think that we're not so... Um, strong and powerful. And there's a difference that I talk about being power over someone. And we're watching a lot of that happen, especially in the US right now, over these last few weeks with the capital going, you know, under siege and everything, is there's so many people that aren't standing in their power. And they're thinking they need to have power over and control. And so have you ever and I watch myself do this. I watch myself shift sometimes even now back and forth and I'll catch myself. But do you watch with your kids when all of a sudden or leadership, you know, your, your, your teams or something, where all of a sudden you got to feel like you got to go, you know, and you got to come up to make them do what you want them to do rather than center yourself, come into your body and, and into your, your true power in your heart, connect those two things, and you can do it really s simply once you, we work with, you know, and develop that muscle, but not to go into that need to control and be power over someone or something, but really what you're talking about is if you had stood up there and you had been in your power, you would have conveyed your strength and your genius and and it would have come across versus being so um meek we 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 want to collapse yeah. and not be so be our true light that quote that marianne williamson said it's our true light that we're we're afraid of yeah. and i think we really need to at this particular time as we roll into 2021 we all need to know how to be powerful, how to be our true self and not, you know, all mixed up into being meek, mild and being we. We need to be me. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So one of the, um, the the next part of this that I want to talk about, because once somebody realizes that, hey, do you know what, this, this is how I'm feeling and I need to kind of get back to, I want to focus on me because I realize and I understand that that is the pathway, that is the, the thing that is going to lead me to living my enlivened life. Um, but come with that is the 
the feeling of um, of guilt and shame, and mm. and often you know because because there is a transition point, right? It's like we have this acknowledgement that hey, this is what I've got to do, ooh, and then come with that is going to be now I'm faced with a bit of fear, a bit of shame, a bit of guilt because now I'm going to start focusing on me. How does one deal with that? It's a and process. It's a muscle. Right they come across. It's a muscle. Yeah, it's a muscle that has to be developed because we're so used to working from, you know, and living a certain way. And it's like when you go to the gym and you need to, you know, start working out with the weights to become healthy and changing our eating habits and all of that. It's the same, pro it's the same sort of thing. You have to learn to get rid of a lot of things, beliefs and um, barriers and the bullshit we, we've, you know, bought into. Mm -hmm. And then we begin to replace those thoughts. We go into looking where we're storing all this in the body. We begin to come home to our bodies and start. I, I kind of equate it to being a TV or being the old analog radios. And you're trying to tune into a frequency. And our body is a transmitter. Our body takes in all this information and it, it takes and, you know, creates a life based upon what it is that's stored in here, kind of like the hard drive on your computer. And so when you begin to change those frequencies, get rid of things that don't work anymore, you begin to change your mindset, you up level your leadership, up level your emotions, be able to come come from a different place with your feelings and emotions, then you can be that receiver that tunes it in and you're like a 5D TV that's like so crisp and you're getting all kinds of new information. But if you're trying to do it from the old mindset and the old way that you're operating, it's not going to work. You're going to yeah. continue to spiral. You're going to try to run from it. You're going to try to you know, it's like the lion is chasing you and you're trying to run from it and you're spinning up in your head. And then all of a sudden you go, gosh, it, who am I? Where am I? I don't even recognize myself. Mm -hmm. And I hear that over and over and over again. I'm like a ghost in my body. And so we develop, a, you know, a system um, that walks you. I have a, 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 plan and a program that helps walk you through that, gets you back in your body, changes your mindset, works with your emotions. And then you're a completely different person. All of a sudden you like have more energy. You have opportunities coming to you because you're not the same person. Like in terms of, of the program that you, that you run, uh, who, who would that be, um, you know, best suited to like, how would somebody identify that, Oh, I need to do something. Like, obviously, you know, you reached out at that time and you were, you reached out to coaches. Now you've become that that person yourself that can actually coach other people. So if somebody recognized, what first point, recognition um, or acknowledgement, Awareness. then then like obviously the next step is to, uh, to get in touch with you. So I'm going to pop up your website so that people can actually do that. But do you want to share with everybody like who that program would be for? So I'm going to pop that up and, and you can... You can do. You can use this opportunity to tell people, like how how do they do this? Because and the reason I'm allowing you to do this is because I feel so strongly about this is a really needed. I hear it time and time and time again that you know people have said to me, I feel like I'm living a life under a veil. You know, I I don't feel like I've lost myself somewhere somewhere along the line. I kind of look back and I like I don't recognize myself. I'm not in the place that I want to be. And we all know what that leads to. You know, relationship breakdown, um, health issues. Uh, you know, just depression, mental health issues, so on and so forth. So this is so important. Yes. And another one is your productivity starts dropping at work. You don't want to wake up. You don't want to do. And everybody's at home right now. So nobody wants, you know, it's like this big hole that you all of a sudden, I call it the rabbit hole. You know, you just begin to spiral and spiral and spiral into the rabbit hole. So what... Um, the work that I do um, is for anybody, once you become aware, if you're listening to this and if there's any type of, you know, where you start 
fight, you know, I'm fighting sort of feelings of depression, but I really don't have anything to be depressed about. I'm not as productive. I'm yelling at my kids. I'm not, you know, having success with my businesses or, um, if you're an entrepreneur, you start, you know, not progressing with your, to the next level, your income's dropping. All of those things are what I call markers. And they're where you can become aware so that you can make a change. So I have some resources on my website. Um, it's in redevelopment and when you go there, there will be a um, work with Marianne and there's also a uh, where you can put in to, to live, I call it an orgasmic life, but you can look at it and you can begin to self-identify. And I've, you know, I would love working one-on-one -on -one, um, with, with people. And then I have a group, a 12 week group program. So you can begin to find yourself, come back home to your body, be able to show up for your kids, your business, your life in a whole new way. And you begin to truly, um, Tracy brought it up so much. It's the, it's like you become enlivened there because all of your channels begin to open your energy changes, your, you don't have to go to the gym and all of a sudden you've got this stored up energy that you, you're finding ways to do a lot more in life. And it's exciting because I get to do something that brings such a profound change in people in such a short way. It's an exponential quick change. And then, you know, you can build mastery in it. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that um, that that we talk about a lot. So in terms of like living your life unlocked and finding your voice and very much the show now is about helping people, like particularly in 2021, finding like the, your, the authentic you and speaking about what it is that you believe in, what it is that you can help somebody else with. And obviously in a show like this, it means I can bring, you know, experts like yourself on Marianne and you're able and I'm able to create a platform for you to share. But one of the things that I see holding people back that they are fearful of actually getting to the point of now I do want to speak. Now I do want to impact other people's lives. Now I do want to make a difference to this world is the fact that they're, they're kind of disconnected with who they are. And so I think what you're doing is allowing people to kind of recognize, you know, settle in. That is the authentic me. I've, I've, found the true me and now I'm able to find that awaken that hidden potential inside of me mm. speak about that and feel really empowered with moving forward with momentum and excitement with my life absolutely and I call that the legacy I call that the you know we We've been taught that legacy is like this big thing that you know what kind of Philanthrop, um, philanthropic um, endeavors and you know I have to, it has to be a multi-million dollar foundation but truly your legacy is when when you are coming into that power and your full the fullness of who you are the ripple effect that you begin to do with your children you know what kind of a mother do you, or father do you want to be you have to be it right now. You have to be the leader that you want to be right now. And so this gives you the mechanism to be that now, not something you're waiting to create in the future, not something you're trying to make happen, but it starts with right now, who are you being and who are you calling yourself forth to be? And not from a place of, force and not from a place of imagination, fake it till you make it, but truly coming back into alignment with who you are and then bringing that gift to the world changes the world. When we're yeah. living our authentic, when we're being our true authentic self. Absolutely. And the great thing about that, like particularly from a a visibility and, and I talk about this a lot on the show, but how to sort of differentiate yourself the easiest way 
to make to differentiate yourself in your marketplace is to be authentically you mm. so when you can when you 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 know adopt that and you take those philosophies on board and you can get in alignment with who you are and just be authentically you you immediately eliminate all competition because there is nobody that can compete with you where they they can compete with you when you are trying to be somebody else or trying to be like somebody else yeah. but if you are just being you you have no competition because nobody else can be like you. True. So true. And I, I you know, it's like the old saying flies to um, flies to honey or, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, they'll just come to you when you're being truly your magnificence and you're not watering it down. You're not trying to be something to everybody, but you're being who you're here to serve by being you and living your uh, your authentic self. So I heard something yesterday or the day before on um, Clubhouse that I'd like to share mm -hmm. for just a second. Absolutely. A baby gem, like an amethyst or a ruby or a diamond, how does it grow? It begins to grow from the crack that gets formed and then it gets its nutrients by that crack. And so then it begins to grow and get bigger and bigger. And we spend so much time hiding our cracks, trying to be perfect, trying to make everyone, you know, like us because we're so perfect. And really it's in our vulnerability, that crack, that story, like my story about my daughter, you know, it can help people relate to you because we're not all perfect. And we've been given this journey. We've been given this particular journey so that we can, you know, I can go through all kinds of things that have happened to me as a woman and had me disconnected. I was raped twice when I was younger and that had me disconnect from my body. And how many women are disconnected from their bodies? How many men have had, were beat or hurt or shamed or, and are disconnected and they're living up in their head because they don't want to feel that pain again. But the pain goes away the more we get into that crevice and then we can share that crevice and get the nutrients and then we can build and then we can attract people like the and polish it out like the diamond becomes you know from the rock yeah absolutely oh, and i love that i love that story we, i was talking with um another lady this morning so as you know our brand new books come out the she myth and i've been interviewing um some women on their she myth stories and you know a part of it i didn't want it all to be like you know woe is me like you were saying you know i've got multiple stories and at the time you were sort of living in your wallow um until you kind of recognized hey i don't want to be here anymore i need to get out and she was talking about how us as women or men and men when we talk mm -hmm. about the cracks we talk about the the challenges and the you know th th that we've had in our past we allow other people other men other women to go okay it's okay I'm okay and and by bottling it all up and this woman was talking about her story and how she'd actually hung on to that for year, decades she hung on to something happened mm -hmm. to her she hung on to that story for decades and it impacted every part of her life and after i interviewed her and sort of in the back office she was then she won't mind me sharing this but she was then talking about it wasn't until one day i'd never shared this story with anyone she said 30 years and i never shared that story she said the day that i did was like this huge relief of oh yeah. my god and she realized that the story or the, the the that she had continued to fabricate and layer things on top of on top of on top of and accept it as her own and up in her head were exactly that they were just stories she had just made up and she realized 
that that problem wasn't actually hers. She had just taken it on board and made it her own. So it goes back to that universal we that you were talked about right at the beginning yeah. when we, we collapse things down and we take it on board and we make it our own. We have a choice and the choice is to either accept that or not to accept it. And in this case, I would say you, you want to reject that and say it's, it's not me. That, 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 that may have happened, but it doesn't define me. That's the key. Something happened, but it, what are you making out of it? And where are you storing that? We store all these traumas or these problems or these things in our body. And then we have all these, you know, frequencies that are just weighting us down. And that's the shadow work, getting to those stories reframing them, getting them to the point where there's no charge anymore. They're not ruling and running your life and you're not living from them, but they happened. Okay. They happened. And now what? Now, what do you choose? Who do you choose to be? How do you choose to live? They happened. And there's ways to discharge that and not get rid of it, not make it like it didn't happen to you, but discharge the, the, the pain that it causes you. Yeah. It's the power that you gave to that. You're going mm -hmm. to take that power back, own it yourself and discharge it. Like you're discharging a bomb really, aren't you? Because yes. otherwise it's like having, you know, you're taking these things on board. This stuff happens to you. It's like having a whole lot of grenades sitting in your body in places that are all, have still all got the, you know, the um, the pin in them yeah. waiting to be to, to be let go. Detonated. And completely discharged, you know, not allow them to be detonated on an ongoing basis, but just discharge them and allow it to just dissipate then you know you don't have to you don't have to carry that with you anymore because I don't I mean it's, it's I find this is just such a fascinating conversation um, because as I've got a little bit older and got um, you know so I really started to think about and do more research on this work just those you know the thoughts and the things that happen to you and you're taking them on board them them being able to be manifested into something else, into a disease or dis-ease in some way, shape or form. So it's yeah. so important that we that we recognize those and do the do the internal work that we need to do to disarm them and take yeah. out and, and own our own power. It's kind of like if you had a toaster and you had it plugged into all these different things, you know, you, you've got your energy going to a bunch of things. And so when you begin to bring all those back and you begin to, then you have more power right within you to do the things that you truly want to do. You're not, you know, having everything plugged into what happened to you at age six, what happened to you last week, what your boss said, what you didn't, that job that you didn't get. Trauma comes in so many ways. It doesn't have to be from a, a, a physical, you know, rape or molestation or something like that. It can be that teacher that told you, you know, you were never going to be something. And so you live your life out of that. You want to be something, but you never can achieve it because you're believing that. It, it, trauma is, is one of the most... Um, it's something we should really pay attention to and really begin to find the traumas and begin to do that shadow work and come alive. Absolutely. Well, I absolutely, you know, I love having these conversations with you and, and because it's so fascinating and it's such an important topic. I want to, um, I want to give you an opportunity to kind of leave today with something that you would like to share with everybody. Maybe it's a quote, maybe it's a piece of advice that you might have given yourself, you know, 20 odd years ago, or a piece of advice that you think would be really useful for them today. Listen to your body. Listen fully to that headache, that shoulders where it's hurting, your lower back that you can't get out of the chair. Listen to it because it's going to get louder if you don't. It will get louder and louder to the point that it is the disease. It is a problem. 
So begin to come down, back in, drop down in to your body and begin to become aware of what it's trying to tell you. And that is one of the key things that will help all of us is when we stop living from here up and take the medicine or numb it with alcohol or um, gambling or shopping or whatever we numb it with, but begin to be present in this moment, slow down, slow down in your life and begin to listen to what it is that your body's telling you and then what is happening right here and right now. Don't be thinking about the future and living in the past. All you have is right now. So be fully alive in this moment and bring all of your awareness and start asking yourself, what is alive for me right now? Mm -hmm. I love that. So there you go, guys, asking ourselves if there's one thing. That, that is the thing that I think we should leave everybody with. The one thing that you want to take away from today's show is you want to ask yourself, what is it that I need to do to make me feel alive? Answer that question for yourself and then go and live your life unlock. Unlock that and do it. And if you do that, then you are going to create joy, you're going to create happiness, and you're going to create your life that you that you want to live. So I'm going to me leave it first. on. Yeah, put me first. Absolutely. So hashtag me first, guys. I'm going to pop that back up on the screen. Hashtag me first. Uh, and just make sure that, you know, if you're listening to the replay, we also want to see your hashtag uh, me first too. So put yourself first. It is not about being selfish. It is about filling the bucket continuously so that you always have a full bucket, full bucket. Because if you don't do this, you're going to deplete that bucket and you will have nothing left to give. And that is not a place where you are, you know, you, that is a place of being locked up, being not alive and feeling like you're in, you know, you, every day is a, is a, you're in the dredge. So you don't want to be there. Mm -hmm. So that being said, I want to thank Marianne so much for being on today's Unlock show. She's a fabulous guest. She is extremely knowledgeable when it comes to this. Had first had experience, obviously, herself and coaches many, many other men and women to live their life unlocked or live their life, you know, enlivened. So just make sure that you head on over to uh, to Mary to Marianne. And if you want to, you can also continue the conversation and listen to her podcast because she does have a podcast too. And here it is. So yes. sovereignwoman.buzzsprout.com. Head on over there and you can listen to her podcast. Also, you can find me on social media, Clubhouse. You can find me on Clubhouse Muse Marianne. You can find me on all social media as Marianne St. Clair. And I'd love to have you reach out and hear what you got from today. Fantastic. So thank, well, you. thank you so much for being here. I've got one last question because I know that you've had, uh, that you, well, I'm hoping I'm not putting you on the spot here, but I've got a copy of the Shemuth book. And if you've had an opportunity to read any of it, even if it's just the title, uh, what what has been the one thing that you've enjoyed taking away from reading the Shemuth book so far? So for me, it's definitely getting into how much our stories and what we bought into has collapsed us into being very disempowered women. And I know that this show is for both women and men and men, you have a lot of your own stories that you were told don't cry and don't, you know, don't be with your emotions, but the she myth is revolutionary. It is something that will help so many women. And, and that's why I'm recommending it, you know, to my clients and on my show and stuff is because we need to, to get into that shadow, get into those stories that we've been told. And it's really, truly a gift for the world. It's so timely. And I really thank you and Vicki for writing it and for bringing it forward because it's a masterpiece. Well, thank you very much. Well, I'm we're super pleased that you're enjoying it. And thank you very much for that. We're, we're glad that you're reading it and that you're actually getting some value from it. So thank you. And I hope that, um, you know, other women will go and, and purchase it. And if you want to, well, you can head on over to Amazon. Just search for The She Myth and uh, you'll find our book on there. And, you know, go ahead and, and download it 
ebook e version or even just get the paperback version. But I want to close today. I want to say thank you very much. And as yeah. always, I finish the show with you must live your life unlocked. If there is one thing that I want you to take away from every single show that I do is to just go and be yourself, live your life unlocked, bring joy and happiness to yourself first, because when you do that, it will radiate out of you and everybody else around you will feel it. And they will also get that infectious part of you, which will be the joy and happiness for their lives too. So have a fantastic day, everyone. I will be back again on Friday with another episode of The Unlock Show. I'm Tracy Wilson, and I look forward to seeing you guys then. Bye for now.